Hello everyone, my name is Bongega and I'm here with my partner Oyama and we will be doing an introductory video on how to approach and interpret musculoskeletal x-rays in orthopedic. This tutorial serves to complement your teaching in the orthopedic block. In addition to providing an approach, we will also be looking at how to describe fractures and C-spine x-rays. When analyzing and ordering x-rays, you should remember the rule of two. You want two views at 90 degrees, usually anterior, posterior, and lateral, two joints, the joint above and the joint below, two occasions, such as before and after a fracture reduction, two limbs, if required, for comparison. When describing an x-ray, you want to confirm the age, the name, and the sex of the patient. Refer to any previous films, if necessary. Look at the date the x-ray was taken, the type of x-ray, and the adequacy, commenting on the area of the bone seen, with the joint above and below ideally, the alignment, note any rotation, and lastly the penetration. Have a systematic approach where each part of the x-ray, bones, joints, and soft tissues, needs to be addressed. There is no formal order, however, if you see an obvious abnormality, you may want to begin there. With the bones, note if it is regular or if there is a gross abnormality. If so, describe it. Follow the entire cortex and look for any discontinuity. Describe any fractures seen and change in bone density. With the joints, is the joint in the correct position? Is it dislocated? If so, in which direction? If a joint is dislocated, there is no longer any contact between the articular surfaces which make up that joint. Dislocations can be described according to the specific joint involved. In this picture of a shoulder joint, you can see an anterior dislocation. Shoulder joints can also dislocate posteriorly and inferiorly. If some contact remains but the joint surfaces are not opposed, the joint is then subluxed. Also note if a fracture involves the joint. Are there any features of joint damage or degeneration? With the soft tissues, note any disruption to suggest that there is an open fracture. Look for any localized swelling. That is it for the general approach. Now moving on to fractures. Hello, my name is Oyama and I will be covering an approach to fractures. In order to adequately describe an x-ray, one must be able to speak the language of fractures. When faced with what looks like a fracture, one must describe whether the fracture is open or closed, the anatomic location of the fracture, the fracture line, the relationship of the fracture fragments, and the surrounding soft tissue. Open fractures, also known as compound fractures as seen in the image, are those that penetrate the skin, such that there's an open wound near the site of the fracture. The bone may or may not be visible through the skin. Closed fractures do not penetrate. The location of the fracture includes the bone involved and specifically the part of the bone. For example, is it the distal, the mid-shaft or the proximal? We should also comment on which side of the body it is located and whether it is intra or extra-articular. There are many ways in which fracture lines can be described. The main ways include transverse, oblique, spiral, comminuted or otherwise known as complex. Describing fracture fragments can be tricky, but it is of the utmost importance to understand them. The concepts that you need to be familiar with are dislocation, which is the disturbance in the normal position of a joint as illustrated, alignment, which is the relationship in the longitudinal axis of one bone to another, angulation, which is the deviation from normal alignment of the distal fragment in relation to the proximal fragment described in degrees, shortening, which is seen as the overlap of fracture fragments, distraction, which is the displacement in the longitudinal axis of the bones, and lastly, a position and displacement which are commonly used interchangeably. This is the amount of end-to-end -end contact of the fracture fragments. Now, let's look at some examples. In these x-ray examples, the demographic information and the date is not provided. This is an AP view of the left tibia and fibula which is of inadequate quality as you cannot see the distal ends of the bones. We can see a closed transverse mid-shaft tibial fracture with a various displacement of the proximal fragment of about a third the thickness of the bone. There is marked tissue swelling. 
This is an AP and lateral view of the right wrist, which is of inadequate quality, as you cannot see the distal ends of the bones. There are two fractures seen here. First is a closed distal radial fracture with complete volar displacement, which is better seen in the lateral view. There is also an ulnar styloid fracture, which is intraarticular with minimal displacement. There is marked tissue swelling. This is an AP view of the right knee and leg, which is of inadequate quality as you cannot see the distal ends of the bones. The first is a closed right proximal tibial fracture with a various displacement of the proximal fragment of about half the thickness of the bone. There is also a closed right proximal fibular fracture with complete vulgus displacement of the proximal fragment. There is also marked tissue swelling. In all these examples, do not forget to assess and comment on the neurovascular status which is done clinically. Bongeka will now go through the approach to C-spine. The C-spine x-ray has three standard views. The lateral view, the anterior posterior view, and the odontoid peg view or open mouth view. The lateral view is often the most informative image. Assessment requires a systematic approach. The general approach to an x-ray must be followed. Always mention the name, the age, the date, and assess the quality of the x-ray. With the coverage, make sure that all the vertebrae are visible from the skull base to T1. If T1 is not visible, then a repeat image with the patient's shoulders lowered or a swimmer's view may be necessary. In terms of alignment, check the anterior line showing the anterior longitudinal ligament seen in green. The posterior line showing the posterior longitudinal ligament highlighted in orange and the spinolaminar line, the line formed by the anterior edge of the spinous processes which extends from the inner edge of the skull shown in red. Trace the cortical outline of all the bones to check for fractures. Note that the spinal cord lies between the posterior and spinolaminar lines. Next, note the disc spaces. The vertebral bodies are spaced apart by the intervertebral discs. These spaces should be approximately equal in height. Prevertebral soft tissue is indicated by the asterisks. This tissue may be widened due to a hematoma in some fractures. Normally, this tissue is narrow until about C4 and then widens to about the same size as the vertebral bodies. A similar approach to the lateral view is followed here. The AP view should cover the whole C-spine and the upper thoracic spine. The lateral edges of the C-spine should be aligned. This is shown by the red lines. Look at the individual bones. Fractures are often less clearly visible on this view than on the lateral. The spinous processes, which are in yellow, should be in a straight line and spaced evenly. Check soft tissues for swelling and surgical emphysema. We have now come to the end of our video. Thank you for watching.